Elite Raids were one of the most exciting new features in Pokemon Go. They allowed players to raid and catch incredibly exclusive Pokemon, and they featured special spawns in the wild, including the legendary birds. But as the months progress, this new amazing feature seemed to just fall apart. Features stopped working, there were always problems, and all that brings us to today, Elite Raid Day. And I find myself asking an important question, are these raids even worth grinding? Well, I know just the place to go to figure this out. I've made it here to Santa Monica and we've run into one of the first and biggest issues of elite raids. The lack of elite raids. Dude, I'm in Santa Monica. This is the best place in California and one of the best places in the entire United States to play Pokemon Go and there's only three remote raids here. One at 2 p.m. and two at 5 p.m. It is 11 a.m. right now and there are no 11 a.m. elite raids in a city with look how many gyms there are. There are so many gyms, dude, and there's not one elite raid for 11 a.m. And if you're like me and don't have a Discord community out here, I mean, it's so hard to find it. Unless you have campfire and we can open up campfire and maybe see if we can find some elite raids in the area. Okay, so zooming out here in Santa Monica, as you can see, campfire, I will say it's really, really nice and really helpful for the whole raid process. But looking around, we have an elite raid here. Starts at 2 p.m. This one, 5 p.m., 2 p.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m., 2, 5, 2, 5. Oh, there is one at 11 a.m. Oh my God, that is so far away. We can get there in 13 minutes. One thing we can do on the walk over there, because it's gonna take us 10, 15 minutes to get there, is also drop the daily incense. So let's put that down, see if we get something cool on the way to our first elite raid of the day today. Our research breakthrough box, that's what we're getting in between our on this daily incense, I guess. Do we get a remote raid pass? Dust, Pokeballs, of course not. Why, what a, what a silly feature. Okay, and, Parasite. What a silly feature. <laughs> and the Daily Incense comes to a close with 24 Pokemon caught. Nothing super crazy, but it's fine because, as you can see, we've got the Elite Raid in the distance. Today in the Elite Raids, we are raiding this guy, Reggie Drago, which is kind of a big part of this conversation today as to if Elite Raids are worth raiding. First though, what we absolutely need to do is Mega Evolve, wait, no, 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 no. We need to Mega Evolve a max level Mega Dragon type because since this is an Elite Raid, getting candies and XL candies for it is near impossible. So we got a max level Dragon Mega, and now we pray we get enough people in this raid. And this highlights one of the bigger problems about remote raids and the nature of remote raids that they're all in person, meaning you cannot remote raid into an elite raid. Someone's using a pseudo-wudo because they saw that I'm in here. <laughs> I love that. Shout out to whoever that is. <laughs> and also you cannot remote raid invite your friends into the elite raid. The only way to take these down is by having an in-person real life community that you walk around with and take raids with, which honestly isn't as hard to do now with the new Niantic campfire feature, which you saw me use to find this raid. It's actually really convenient. The only downside is that it's not fully globally available yet. Once it is though, I think it will make a huge difference for elite raids and make them a lot more uh, accessible to people who don't have a in-person community to raid with. But that's just the nature of elite raids and it makes sense assuming the raid bosses you're going up against are very rare, very useful, and worth the complicated process of going and finding people to battle with if you don't typically do that already. Which leads us to the next topic and question, are the Pokemon in elite raids even good? After all, it's an elite raid, the most exclusive and difficult to take down kind of raid in Pokemon Go. All right, we got a Reggie Drago, check this out. It's an in-person raid though, so we get two pop-ins. Nice, we get three Regidrago XL candy, which is fantastic. I really, really need that because I'll show you after we catch this because we have a 17 balls, so we will catch this. I'm actually gonna silver pineapple as well. Oh God, I'm missing the excellence. The only stressful time in a raid is when you don't have a lot of balls and you have to catch a legendary, when you have a 100% IV on screen or when you're raiding an elite raid boss. <laughs> oh God, okay. I'll use a couple more silver pineapple berries and then we'll go to the golden raz. Because again, the hard part with elite raid bosses is that since you only get a couple of raids in a day and they only happen like once a month, candies and Excel candies for these Pokemon are impossible to get. One more silver pineapple and then we'll go to the golden res. Please. <sighs> Excellent. No. Excellent. Thank God we caught it. Oh my God, I was getting stressed there. And this isn't even 100% IV, so it's not even worth stressing about. It's terrible IVs. Ooh, but check this out. The last time this was in Elite Raids, I did actually get myself a 100% IV. And I brought up to level 40, so we have 10 XLs, so we can actually power it up one more time. Sick, we got over 3,000 CP for this guy. But again, the Excel candies, impossible to get. So. Are these elite raid bosses worth the difficulty? To figure that out, we have to look back on the past elite raid bosses and their placement in the meta, both for PvP and in raids. First though, it's 1.38, elite raid time. Ooh, and on the way to the raids, we have two 12 kilometer eggs, which could have something, uh, something. Uh. Take some Larvitar candy. I need those XLs actually because I got some really good recent shadow Larvitar. So, gotta level those guys up. Okay, on the nearby, the raid has and we have arrived. Now, the history of Pokemon Go Elite Raid bosses 
aren't as exciting as you would imagine with how difficult these raids are to find and to take down. First elite raid boss ever was Hoopa Unbound, which, although is a super cool mythical Pokemon, it's not meta relevant at all in raids or in PvP. Although the other Hoopa form, the confined form, is actually a decently meta relevant ghost type. So Hoopa Unbound was good candy to get, but it wasn't really a good Pokemon to use or have in general. But the nice thing with Hoopa was that it was, again, an exclusive mythical Pokemon that had only come out in special research before. And it was a mythical, not a legendary. Then the next raid boss was the one we're currently battling now, Reggie Drago, which is, spoiler alert, not relevant in raids or in PvP. It's just kind of like a cool Pokemon. Pokemon to get. But the thing about Reggie Drago is that it's a legendary, it's not a mythical. One of the first legendaries, big legendaries, that we've seen kind of like gated behind some sort of special spawn or special raid since the Elite Raids. Elite Raids were pretty fun just because, I don't know, you had like Mewtwo and Regigigas back when it was super duper rare. There were some truly rare bosses in the, not Elite Raids, it was the uh, EX Raids. The EX Raids were kind of a fun thing. They were sort of just as annoying as Elite Raids, but at least the bosses were better. <laughs> Regidrago, which is kind of a normal, not meta relevant legendary, is taking up space in the Elite Raids. Is it worth raiding? If you want it, definitely, but it's not relevant at all. Then the next elite raid boss was Reggie Alecki, which I actually, I don't have. I didn't get in my Pokedex, <laughs> but it's fine because it was another legendary Pokemon, not mythical, that is also not relevant in PvP or raids. And then now the fourth round of elite raid bosses, we've got this guy. Reggie Drago. Back again in the Elite Raids, still not meta relevant, and also can't be shiny. Usually when a legendary comes out for the second time in raids, it comes out with its shiny, so it's still fun to raid, but Reggie Drago's back. No shiny. Now, the raid boss wasn't the only reason why it was fun to go do elite raids. There's one other feature that's absolutely incredible. And it's this, Shadow Shiny Tadirisa. <laughs> okay, it's not actually this, but this is an insane catch, dude. This is out of my balloon, a Shadow Shiny on the day. Oh my god, what a grab. This is better than anything we're gonna get from the elite raids today, that's for sure. Oh, that's so sick, a 264 CP. Dude, another Shadow Shiny. Actually, check this out, IVs are bad. We have three Shadow Shiny Tadirisa, so this one that we just, actually, you know what, our highest CP one right here. Let's take this one and evolve this actually to my first ever Shadow Shiny Ursa Ring and complete the family. And one day when the moon is out, we can get our Shadow Shiny Ursa Luna. Sick, there he is. Cool, family completed. That's a dope thing today. Oh, that's so cool. Actually, you know what? I might already have, no, I don't already have it. Okay, we can't evolve it yet. We need a, we need a moon. So that's next on the list. This feature was the rare exclusive spawns that would happen after you defeated an elite raid. How this works essentially is once the first group of people defeat an elite raid, confetti would begin to fall and special Pokemon would begin to spawn around the gym. You would notice a 15 minute timer in the right side of your screen and you'd kind of just hang out and wait for some cool Pokemon to pop up. On screen is a list of Pokemon that people were reporting seeing in the wild. Most notably, the legendary Birds, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres would spawn in the wild and could be found shiny. This was incredibly fun. For people who wanted more legendaries or just wanted to hunt some free shiny legendary Pokemon, participating in elite raids was kind of a big deal. And there were also other amazing spawns like Raichu, Shelgon, Matang, Dino, Mainfu, and apparently even Mewtwo, although I, I, never, I never saw that. I don't think that's real. This was the most fun part about elite raids. Forget the raid boss, especially since they weren't meta relevant. This was the best, and made for some fun, but tragic moments. Oh my god, oh my god, oh no, no, not this, not this, not this. Dude, on the incense. <laughs> oh my god, this isn't even a daily incense. We got an Articuno on the incense. I knew that was the, the key. Okay, that's not the strategy that we're gonna use today. Ironically, it's close, but it's not quite it. Oh my god, on the incense, on the incense. Okay, this is a tip for everybody doing these elite raids, man. Use your incense when you're walking around. We're gonna go for the, here we go, right now. Excellent. Wasn't, wasn't quite the excellence. A lot closer than I remember it being. One shake. Come on. No, don't run. No, <laughs> no so close. So that was fun. Essentially, there was a radius around the gym where Pokemon would spawn, and if it was on the border of the radius, the Pokemon would disappear, which was a weird issue that it, the game was having. But this amazing feature, the best part in my opinion about Elite Raids, was completely disabled after the last Reggie Drago Elite Raid day in March of 2023. You'll notice if you go out and participate in Elite Raids, there's no confetti after you defeat it, there's no timer, there's no special spawns. And honestly, even when there were special spawns, you couldn't really tell what were the special ones and what weren't. And typically the spawns were kind of underwhelming and would happen like once every couple of minutes. It wasn't that great. But the possibility of finding these cool Pokemon, even the birds, was still real and still very fun. And again, unfortunately, this feature no longer is a part of the current Elite Raid system. Which again, begs the question, are these raids 
even worth attending. Especially considering that now you can't get the birds or special spawns after defeating these non-meta relevant Pokemon. Well, while we answer that, I do want to catch our last Elite Raid, Reggie Drago, today. This is uh, not what I was looking forward to in Santa Monica. Got a line of cops, you got some protesters. Standard day here at the pier. Yeah, yeah. There's the raid. We have found the Reggie. And hopefully this will be my last Reggie Drago Elite Raid ever because quite frankly, this raid day and these raids just kind of weren't worth it. I don't know why, but the Elite Raid boss quality has just been abysmal <laughs> at best. They're cool Pokemon, I guess, but not really worth the, I guess, effort that would go into a Elite Raid day, especially with the day having raids at 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m. It's, I don't know, it's really disruptive throughout your entire day. It kind of just becomes all about Pokemon Go. So if you're not really getting a big return on that, it's not really worth the time. In my opinion, unfortunately for Reggie Drago, this is just not this in Regilecki, especially since they can't be shiny just not great or worth the time. And since there's no special spawns or anything else kind of extra to look forward to during these raids, they're kind of just not worth it. Now, I will say the one big thing that would make them worth it and would make these raid days worth it, we got a Rare Candy XL, by the way, three XL candies, nice. I mean, that's nice, those are nice, the bonuses are nice. The one thing that would really make these days worth it is if the raid bosses were actually good. There's plenty of Pokemon, and plenty as a part of a video that I made back in the day, of elite raid bosses that I think should come to Pokemon Go and would make the game a lot more exciting. Some examples include Zarude. Zarude was only ever released once as a part of a special research and has never returned, but it is actually one of the most meta-relevant Pokemon and best Pokemon in the game in terms of grass types and I think even dark types. It's a really good Pokemon and it just has never came back. That would be a fantastic elite raid boss. Another Pokemon would be Armored Mewtwo, a Pokemon that has become one of the rarest in the entire game because it was only ever around once, maybe twice, years ago and then never came back although it's not meta relevant so i guess it falls in the same bucket as reggie drago here it is super exclusive and very collectible and sought after and would make honestly a great elite raid day boss and then you've got other pokemon like keldeo which is a meta relevant fighting type attacker which again only came out in paid research and has never come back since plus plenty of other amazing exclusive and a lot of mythical Pokemon. If and when those come to Elite Raids, it will make them much more worth it. And if the special after the raid spawns come back, that would make them a lot better as well. I don't exactly know why that feature left, but Elite Raids are not the same without it. Boom! Last Reggie caught. And this truly might be my last Reggie that I ever catch. But the nice part is that I can go and power up my 100% IV Reggie one more time with some more XLs. Unless this thing comes to tier five raids, I will probably never max this out. Also, since remote raids were nerfed, even if it came to raids, I probably wouldn't max this out. Since remote raids were nerfed so badly, making raids like elite raids extra, extra fun is a really important part of the game balance. And it definitely just has not been done. Oh, wait, 12 kilometer eggs. We got one shiny today, let's get two. That is the worst Pokemon that has ever existed aside of Trubbish. Bam. All right, all right. So when you ask the question, are elite raids worth battling? My honest answer is no. But let me know what you think in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out the other ones on screen. See you next time.